Hello and welcome to this lesson on moments, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at moments and how to be able to calculate moments on objects. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the conditions under which a force produces a turning effect, describe the support force on a pivoted body and understand the forces and moments on a body in equilibrium. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at the following part of the AQA a level physics specification 3.4.1.2 moments so in previous lessons on forces we've looked at things such as linear forces so these are forces which make objects accelerate in straight lines so a linear force will cause an object to accelerate in a straight line so it's causing an acceleration by changing speed but in our upcoming lessons on forces we're going to be looking at rotational forces so these are forces which make objects accelerate in a circular path so so this rotational force will cause your object to accelerate in a circle. So a rotational force or a system of rotational forces may cause an object to rotate. So it can cause acceleration by changing direction. So if we consider the following object, the object is fixed at point X and we can place a force downwards on the object. Now it's always important to draw your force of weight from the center of mass of the object in free body diagrams. So we call the fixed point on an object the pivot or the Fulcrum. And an example of this is when the point at where an object is screwed to a wall. So in this example, point X is the ful fulcrum or the pivot. Now, whilst the force here is acting vertically downwards on the object, it is weight. In reality, the object will rotate due to this force. This is due to the object being fixed in a position at a point. So this will mean that the force will cause the object to rotate. So the force will have a rotational effect on the object. So whilst, like we said, the force is acting vertically downwards on the object in reality the force will cause the object to rotate so the resultant force is causing the ob object to accelerate by changing its direction so the effect of a force causing rotation or a turning effect is known as the moment of the force now the moment of a force depends on two quantities the magnitude of the force so the bigger the force the greater its moment and the perpendicular distance of the force from the pivot the further the force acts from the pivot the greater its moment. So we can combine these two ideas and we can use this to calculate the moment of a force with the following equation, that the moment is equal to the force times by the perpendicular distance from the pivot. Now the perpendicular distance is the distance of the parallel line between the force, which is linked into the line of action, and the pivot. So it's better to say that the perpendicular distance is the distance of the parallel line between the line of action of the force and the pivot. So it's extremely important that when you are do, using this equation that you will always use the perpendicular distance that the line of action is away from the pivot. Now the units of moments are a combination of the units of force and distance as the two values are multiplied in the equation. So whilst forces are measured in newtons and the perpendicular distance from the pivot is measured in meters, our unit for the moment is the newton meter. Now, moments are vectors as they're making an object rotate. So when calculating moments, you must state the direction that the moment causes rotation in. So the effect of a force causing an object to rotate is called a moment or the torque. Now, the point at which an object rotates is called the pivot or the fulcrum. So we can calculate a moment with the following equation, that the moments in Newton meters equals the force in Newtons times by the perpendicular distance from the pivot in meters. And the force in this equation must be the vertical force acting on the object. So if the force is acting at an angle, then the vertical component of the force must be found. So for example, it could be F sine theta. Now note, we can also calculate the moment of a force about any point, not just the pivot. However, in solving problems, it's often most convenient to take moments about the pivot, as there's often an unknown force acting through the pivot, its contact force on the object. And because moment is force times by distance from the pivot. If we take it from the pivot, that will the distance will equal zero, so we don't have to consider that force. Now we can use the idea of a moment of a force to solve two sorts of problems. Firstly, we can check whether an object will remain balanced or will start to rotate, and we can calculate an unknown force or distance if we know that the object is balanced and therefore in equilibrium. 
So we can get objects which rotate about a pivot to balance. So we'll consider the foreign object which is balanced on the pivot. So this happens when the multiple forces and the moments are acting on the body. And the physics behind getting an object to balance is called the principle of moments. So these forces on the objects, you can see here, will also produce moments on either side of the pivot. That's because the object is fixed about the pivot, so that these forces acting on the object will cause a rotational motion. Now, when the object balances, the moments equal each other on either side of the pivot. This means that the moments will cancel each other out, the rotate because the rotation they're producing are in opposite directions, which is why it's so crucial to remember that moments are vectors. So it means that ultimately, mathematically, one moment is going to be a positive value and the other moment is a negative value. But it's clear that when an object balances, there is no resultant moment on the object. So we say that when an object is balanced, it is in equilibrium. Now, for an object to truly be in equilibrium, there must be no resultant moment or no resultant force acting on the object. So in reality, this means that the moments on either side of the pivot will sum to zero. And it means that the forces acting upwards and the forces acting downwards on the object will also sum to zero. So let's just consider our moments. So we can say, therefore, for an object to be balanced, the moments are going to be equal on either side. So therefore, the anti-clockwise moments will equal the clockwise moments. So if we completely focus on the moments for this idea, we can derive an equation. And we can say that the anti-clockwise moment, which is going to be force times by distance for that particular force, will equal the clockwise moment, which will be the force times by distance of that particular force. So for an object to be in equilibrium, there must be no resultant force and no resultant moment on the object. So the sum of the moments clockwise about a pivot will equal the sum of the moments anti-clockwise about a pivot. So the force clockwise times by the distance clockwise will equal the force anti-clockwise times by the distance anti-clockwise. So we can write it as the following. Now please do note, if there's more than one force on either side of the pivot, you would work out the moments individually clockwise and individually anti-clockwise and then sum all the anti-clockwise moments together and sum all the clockwise moments together and then work out the final value as shown in the diagram on the screen. So let's have an example of a moments calculation. So here, you've got one moment acting anti-clockwise and one moment acting clockwise for a balanced object. So you can find the force causing the anti-clockwise moment. So we can say that the anti-clockwise moment is equal to the clockwise moment. So force one times by distance one equals force two times by distance two. So we put in our values from the, uh, the situation and say F1 times by six equals tens times by four. So therefore we can say six F1 equals 40. So therefore for F1 equals 40 over 6, which is 6.7 newtons. So it's important that when you're answering these types of questions, you write out the equation, you then place the values into the equation, you can work through the values and rearrange where needed, then you give your answer to the same significant figures as those given in the question with the correct units. So another example of a moment's calculation is for you to find the distance between the pivot and the force caused in the anti-clockwise moment when this object is balanced. So again, you will say force one times by distance one equals force two times by distance two, because we know that the anti-clockwise moment equals the clockwise moment. So we then place our values into the equation and say D1 times by 15 equals 10 times by 30. So D1 so times by three, sorry. So D1 times by 15 equals 30. So D1 equals 30 over 15. So D1 equals two meters. So again, you write out the equation, you place the values into the equation, Equation, work through the values, rearrange where needed, and give your answer to the same significant figures as the question with the correct units. So if we can summarise what we've learnt in today's lesson. We should know the moment of a force about a point. Know that a moment is defined as the force times by the perpendicular distance from the point to the line of action of the force, and we should also be aware of the principle of moments. So if we've been successful and we've learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the conditions under which a force produces a turn effect, describe the support force on a pivoted body, and understand the forces and moments on a body in equilibrium. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on moments, which is part of the mechanics topic in AQA A-Level Physics. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day.